Welcome back to Wishwell Farms. Today we are harvesting pumpkins. We have about four acres of pumpkins planted here. The way we pick our pumpkins is we pull the vines off the stem. You can see there's four vines on every stem. Sometimes we cut them, but early in the season we like to pull the vines off because if we cut them, the stem will dry out and turn woody very quickly. So this allows the pumpkin to maintain its dark green color on the stem longer. Just like that. After we pull the vines off the pumpkins like they're doing right now, we line them up along the edge of the drive trail. This is a drive row for spraying. Next, we'll be driving a tractor and wagons down through here to load them up. Now, back in September of 2019, we planted this field in perennial rye. You can see the dead rye here. It's all laid down on the ground and dead. It looks like a bedding of straw. The pumpkins are actually laying on top of this and it prevents them from getting dirty. I have a video of us planting the perennial rye last September. If you want to see that, I will put it up here in the cards and at the end of the video. About the third week of May, the rye will be about shoulder height. We want to kill it before it gets any taller than that. It just gets unmanageable and it's very difficult to plant our pumpkins into when it's taller than that. So usually around chest to shoulder high, we spray Roundup on the rye to kill it and then we will no-till our pumpkins into the rye. And I also have a video on that. If you're interested in seeing the planting process, I'll put that up in the cards and at the end of the video. This side of the patch that we're picking on today are the larger pumpkins. Very good for carving jack-o'-lanterns for Halloween. These varieties are Fatso and Large Marge. 35 to 50 pound pumpkins right here. And it is a very good crop this year. You can see how dark green the stems are. There's no powdery mildew on them. Very healthy. Very happy with this year's crop. Starting in late July, we will spray our pumpkins weekly with an insecticide and a fungicide. Most of our crops on our farm, we don't spray pesticides, but on pumpkins, it's almost a must. The cucumber beetles will totally destroy the crop and powdery mildew, which is a disease that attacks cucurbits, which are vine crops like melons, zucchini, cucumbers, pumpkins. Uh, powdery mildew will completely wipe out your crop if you are not spraying crop protectants, fungicides, at least every seven to 10 days. So if we weren't spraying fungicides, these stems would be brown and woody from powdery mildew attacking the plant. You can look under these green leaves and you see just a little bit of white whiteness on the undersides of the leaves. The powdery mildew is starting to take over. It always happens this time of year, but a majority of the plants are still healthy and green. You can see it starting to attack that one there. But if the entire crop was attacked by powdery mildew, these plants would be white, almost snow white, and the stems would no longer be green, dark green like that. They would be kind of a woody color, almost the color of this rye. And then they get punky and soft and will often snap off when you go to pick them up. So these are very strong, healthy stems. Man, we got some big pumpkins this year. That's at least a 50 pounder. Here's another good example of powdery mildew in the field. If you turn this leaf over, you can see all the white powdery mildew spores on the underside of the leaf. So the type of sprayer we use on the pumpkin crop is far different than the ones we use on field crops for herbicides. We use a high pressure sprayer that blows out a very fine mist at 175 PSI that'll blow it down in the crop canopy and get up underneath the leaves and actually penetrate the canopy and get on the pumpkins. And without that, we would have a lot of ugly pumpkins not protected from the insects and the, and the disease. We about got them full. Ready to head back to the farm and unload.
This is my high pressure, a single sided boom sprayer that I use for pumpkins and sweet corn. And what makes it unique is that it only has a boom on one side. And it's all manual adjustments, but it slides up and down on this tube. And you can see these holes here. That's for setting the pin right here to hold the boom up at different levels. So when I'm spraying sweet corn, you know, I want that boom six, seven feet high above the corn spraying down on the silks. So I'll lock it usually in this position right here. Today we're a lot lower, probably two and a half feet off the ground for spraying pumpkins. That's only a 300 gallon tank. I'm normally spraying five to 10 acres at a time. It's got this high pressure pump on here. And at 175 PSI, you can really penetrate the crop canopy with that spray mist, getting the fungicide and insecticide and foliar fertilizers down in the canopy where it belongs to do what it's supposed to do. And it'll often swirl around under the plant and get underneath the leaves up into the stomata of the leaves where those foliar nutrients can be absorbed into the plant. Another unique feature about the high pressure single sided boom sprayer is that uh, it, it puts down a lot of gallons per acre. And that's what you want when you're trying to get your uh, nutrients and pesticides down into the crop canopy. So today I'm driving five miles per hour and putting down 38 gallons to the acre. So a lot different than spraying herbicides on a large grain farm where you might be spraying five to 10 gallons an acre and going 15, 16 miles an hour, if not faster. So totally different when using a sprayer like this for a vegetable crop or I guess the pumpkins aren't really vegetables but you know for a, a fall uh, pumpkin crop we want to really drench these plants and the pumpkins and the stems and the vines with the nutrients and pesticides that we're trying to spray. Today is September 23rd it's probably going to be our final spray. Usually we just try to get through the end of September and during the month of October, we don't really need to spray the pumpkins anymore because the vines are really starting to die off by then. Sometimes they've had a frost and that kills them. But uh, most of the pumpkins by October have turned orange. Probably three fourths of them have been picked. So there's really no reason to waste money on pesticides and crop protectants on a crop that's not really growing anymore. We normally start spraying the pumpkins in late July when they start vining out and setting fruit in order to keep the powdery mildew and the cucumber beetles off of them, which are the two big things that we worry about on our pumpkin crop. And today it's mid-afternoon, which is not typically when I spray pumpkins. We usually do it very late in the evening, almost at dusk, after the honeybees have all left the field, because the pesticides that I'm spraying on the pumpkins will kill honeybees. And it's very important to not kill honeybees because they do the pollinating for you. But this time of year, the honeybees are not in here anymore because all of the flowers have turned to pumpkins. There's no more yellow flowers out here to be pollinated. So it's safe to go ahead and spray in the middle of the afternoon. We typically spray our fertilizers at the end of the day, late in the day, early evening, because that's when the stomata on the undersides of the leaves open up and can absorb the foliar nutrients that we may be spraying. Um, in the heat of the day, they're closed up so the plant doesn't respirate. So that's not a good time to spray any foliar fertilizers that you're trying to feed the plant. <laughs> Operation Pumpkin Drop. Here we go. Alrighty folks, that's gonna wrap up our pumpkin video. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you again down on the farm real soon.